All right, we're back with this HD28 again, and now I'm going to make a bone nut. I've already done some of the work here um, on the belt sander, which is over there behind us. Got that done. What I've done now, what I've done to get this point is roughed in this nut blank, and I've cut the bevel on it, which I have on my belt sander. I have a tilting table, and I have that set to what this should be, and I just lock it in there, and I never move it. So I can cut pretty accurate bevels pretty consistently. They will vary a little bit here and there. you got to fine-tune it sometimes. But I got this nut. It's fitting in here. And let me show you something else. These, these digital calipers. This is a new thing from Stu Mac. Uh, these are digital. I used to use the dial calipers, and I have been very... Uh, I used those for, what, 18 years? That was also one of the first tools I bought. I got these digital ones here just for fun. Because again, I need, I need tools for tax deductions. And uh, I've been really pleased with how fast these are and how accurate they are. So 213.5, you know, 214, 203, 205. I get a very fast reading that this nut is not quite totally square, but that's okay. And I'll tell you what, I've got a little bit of a thin side and a little bit of a thick side. And I'm going to scoot it back and forth in here until I decide which side I like better. And in this case, I like the thick side a little bit better. So I'm going to scoot it over, all the way over, and I'm going to start marking this way. Um, I've got the bevel where I want it, and the way I check that is to hold it up to the light and look under it. And that's pretty nice. It's sitting down there nice and firm, just the way I want it. So I'm going to push this nut over here. I'm going to get my pencil. This is the half round pencil that I, you file off on the belt sander. And what you do is you set it on the frets and scribe a mark across the top of the nut like this. And then while it's there, I hold it and come in with the same pencil and scribe it right upside the headstock here. Give me two scribe marks. Okay? I get people, you know, they want pre made nuts. <laughs> And that just drives me insane because when you see the precision, I think the nut is quite possibly the most precise thing um, that I do. It's very precise. I suppose you can use a pre-made nut, but it, just, it drives me crazy to think about that. Okay, so here's this nut blank, and there's the marks, and you can see I've got a mark here, a mark there, I've got a mark up on the top. I'm going to go over to the belt sander. And I'm going to grind all this down. Uh, actually, you know what I use? To cut that much off, I go over to the uh, bandsaw and go, Ow! cut off that quarter inch, eighth of an inch, whatever it is. And then I go over to the belt sander. So I'm going to go over and do that. And you don't get to see that part. And then I'll be back and we'll talk about how I set up the nut. Here's the nut. Shaped. Slide it in there. See what we got. When you do your pencil on, there's always going to be one side that does, in fact, stick out a little bit, and that's okay. I'm going to come back and touch that up in a minute. Actually, I did pretty good on this one. So I've got that. Bounce it out just a little bit. Get a little bit of super glue right here. And drop it in here. And that's to hold the nut in place while I'm working on it, because the last thing I want is for it to slide around on me. Okay, then the only thing I don't like about these digital calipers is you gotta you gotta recalibrate them. So when I want a flush right here on the end, I have to recalibrate it. And boy, believe me, the first time I figured that out, I'm gonna flush it out right there, and it's got a zero button, and now it's zeroed out. The reason for that, I'll show you. I'm gonna get. On strings. This is the same set of strings I used earlier that line up the bridge. So here's an E string. I'm going to bend it like I showed in my string video. And where the pins go? Let's this guitar. These will work. If I drop them in there. Set of slotted plastic pins I'm going to use. 
put them in there. You know what? These are tusk pins, and they've got um, a real narrow slot, which I don't like. So I'm going to get rid of these. Give me another shot. Hug. What I want, because my bridge is not slotted at all, I want the good old fashioned Martin thermoplastic with the huge, horrible string slot. Now, now we'll work. Put that in. There we go. Better. Remember how to string strings? Pull it in. Get yourself just enough slack. Come over the top, wonder out. Hold it down with the thumb, bend that up. Put it right here. Got one wrap above, one wrap below. Locks it in automatically. And here's my E string. That I use. I could have done all this before I turned the camera on, but you know. Now I get to see what that two and a quarter inch bridge spacing looks like on this one. Pull the string through, get an uptint slot, wrap it over the top. It's just like dialing. If you uh, do any roping off a horseback, <laughs> which I don't, <laughs> but it's just like that. Except you don't lose your thumb. You dial it wrong and that cap fits the end of the rope, you're going to lose your thumb. And most uh, calf ropers are missing all a part of one of their thumbs. And you can tell I'm not a calf roper because I have both my thumbs. And I can go ahead and trim this off, get it out of the way. I got a little magnet right here that lives on my workbench and just stick those string ends on there. Okay, so now I'm going to set my calipers for one hundred thousandths of an inch, which has proven itself to be a pretty good measurement and they said 101 that's going to be good enough lock it down oh where's my pencil right there okay take calipers push it up against the side of the fingerboard here scoot that high e string over to it hold it mark it i mark both sides of the string with the pencil so i've got it hidden in for the with you know with Pencil marks. Same thing over here. There's nothing magical about 100 thousandths of an inch. It's just, just me has proven to be a pretty good measurement. Uh, if it's a one and three quarter inch neck and I want to space it in a little bit, I go maybe you know 110, 115 even, and that's kind of neat because on a, on a one and three quarter inch neck, if you space the strings in a little bit, they feel secure. The little ease. And the, the ease feel it's more secure and you don't have to bend your hand you don't have to bend your fingers so much so you can have a wider neck and your fingers can be more relaxed as you reach that bottom E. it's a nice feel uh, on a one and three quarter inch neck I personally have set it to the same spacing as one and eleven sixteenths maybe just a hair bigger uh, and it's a, it's a it's a nice feel uh, it's just it's very forgiving but 105 or 100 is, is pretty good and I'm going to look at it visually. Remember, I have a two and one quarter inch spacing down here, so this is going to give me my first chance. And that looks really nice. I might scoot that E in just a tiny, tiny bit as I go down there. It's not slotted, so I can even just scoot that over. And I like that string to string balance real well. Okay? Now I get my nut files. I've got six nut files. You can very easily get by with two, three. You know, you can roll them. So I've got a 56, 58 actually. It's all worn off. I don't know what it is. Let's see what it is. This is the true test. It's a 50, 56. It's 55 actually, but it's 56 according to that. And then there's the 45. 35, I can tell by the thickness of them, there's the 28, 20, and 13. 13 actually measures 14. They don't have to be that precise, you, you, you know, you need a little bit of room so the string's not 
snug in there. It needs to have a little bit of room. But okay, I've got the 13 and the 56. Now I'm going to mark, I'm going to set those, and I'm just going to put a little bit of groove in here. Take it down here. Mark them or uh, file a little bit. Just a little to hold the string. Stu Max shows a gauge that you can put up here and you can put a single slot and you can cut like that. I've never actually used it. Um, it's just another tool, you know, I've got enough tools. I'm handy with my calipers, I like this way. This way, I, I just know, I've done it for 20 years this way. I like it this way. What I do like is that I can still see my pencil marks, you see that? I cut a mark and I can still see my pencil mark. Whereas if I was going to file over the pencil mark, now the pencil mark's gone. And I like being able to still see my mark. Especially because I might want to decide to squish it one way or the other, you know. And I'll show you that as we go along. So here's the 56. And I just brace it with my fingers here on the side. Like that. Use it as a fence. On the outside ease... I am angling in just a little bit towards the uh, tuner. The tuner comes around the wrap right here. I'm clear over here, and I split that distance in half. So here's the string. The tuner's over here, and I angle the file down the middle of that. Just a little. Okay, I'm going to hold that string. That's all it is. Click, just to hold the string. And I've got lots of room. And I'll show you how I want lots of room. Now I have recalibrated my calipers back to zero. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to measure the inside of the two E's. One point four one nine. My calculator, one point four one nine. One point four one nine. There we go. Minus I happen to know that these other four strings add up to 125 because again, one of the first things I do is measure, uh, you know, measure them so I know. So, so 1.419 minus 0.125 equals 1.294 and divide that by 5 because there's 5 spaces left and 2588. See it? That's the distance between the strings. So I'm going to set my calipers for a little bit of a fudge factor. I'm going to go with 2586. 2444, 254, 258. <laughs> it's 257. Close enough. Okay. That's going to be the spacing in between each string. And yeah, I know. You can get the little tool. You'll probably be done by now if you had the special steam act tool. But I have more control over the process this way. And how long does it really take to plug some numbers in a calculator, you know? Over the top, hold it down. Wonder that. Just put a little tension on it. Doesn't have to have even. Doesn't have to be even close to full tension. Let's see. This is A. Put a little bend in it. Pop it in there. I'm gonna do an off arm here. There's D. There's G. Pinch. G down through the hole. Flip it over the top. I 
personally like elixir piano reds. I get really used to that smooth feel and these strings. <laughs> but they sound good, they're good strings. So that's what I use. Yeah, clip them all off. Okay, string changing 101. Now, I'm going to change the music. Okay. Get these strings out of the way. And I've got my caliper set, 257. Let's set it in here. Let the string push it up against it. Make sure it's not pushing too hard. You need to have a little bit of room. That's why I set it with a fudge factor, so 257, when I really wanted like 258. That'd be alright. Come on, pencil. Uh-uh. Pencil failure. There we go. I better check it again. Okay. i tell you. So much for that one. I got new pencils, so when they fail, they're gone. Whew. I got a new player in the game now. Two fifty-seven. Mark it. Go over here. Do the A string, same way. Just bump. Okay, we're going to files. I'm going to use a 46 for the 46. And a 20 for the uh, 17. A little bit. Right, I'm gonna do groove. Okay, now I'm gonna do the last two strings, and this is where I have my last chance to fudge or get it fixed. So I'm gonna scoot the D over and make sure I get the 257, and then I'm gonna scoot the G and the B over. Do I have it? And then I'm gonna measure in the middle, and it better be right, and it's not quite right, which is not uncommon. So I find that my A has got just a little too much. The E and the B are really nice. So I'm going to set the G and the B correctly. And these two correctly. And I think actually that's probably going to make it right there. I think if I go back and measure now, I'm going to be good. And then... Okay, I'm going to cut these. 35 for the 36. You should you got to roll just a little bit because it's a 36 string. So I'll take that 35 and just roll it a little bit. 28 for the 26. Now, here's where it gets precise. Now that I've got the string slots kind of roughed in, I'm going to take my feet of my um, calipers again, and they're still locked in, remember? And I'm going to measure each one of them again. And I've got a little too much between the E and the A, and a little too little between the A and the D. The D and the G is a little too much. B and the E are pretty good. Okay, so the first one I'm going to start with is the E and the A. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pencil, I'm going to mark on here, a little mark over here. And that tells me that as I'm cutting that slot down, I'm going to go this way just a little bit. 
and I'll get it that way. And then the D and the G are a little loose, but the G and the B are a little tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the G string over just a little bit. I'm going to move those over. And those are pretty good. Let me get the actual measurement for you and we'll see how, how much we're talking about here. So, 264, 248, so quite a bit, you see, and 261. So that gap is good, and this gap is good, and this one's a 262. So that gap, that gap, let's see, that gap, that gap, and that one are good. But they're all the same anyways. And the small one is between the A and the D. Okay, so that'll work. If I scoot the A over this way and scoot the G over this way, um, it'll be pretty good. Of course, I'm measuring, and, and you know this is insanely precise. <laughs> Whether you can actually feel this or not, um, I don't know, but I'm going to get it right. So, that's what I get paid to do. I've got lots of height to work with here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sink this E string in. Got to loosen it up a little bit. Oh, did you see what I did? Held it up, and I held it between the second and the third fret, and I looked at the clearance over the first fret. And it should just absolutely barely kiss that first fret. I always leave it just a little high um, when I'm doing a, uh, a rough nut because I do the actual final thing after I've got it set in there and glued in there, polished and everything. Then I do the actual final measurement. Huh? So I just took a quick look at that and it's way high. I could also scoot that E over just a little bit if I wanted to because I didn't remeasure the G factor as a hundred thousandths of an inch. So, you know, all I'm trying to do is get the same space between the E and the A as everybody else. So I probably will go ahead and scoot the E over just a little as I go down. To do this, I'm splitting the angle of the fingerboard. So here's the angle of the fingerboard right here, and here's the angle to the headstock right here, and I'm splitting that angle about right here, and I'm also rounding the final edge a little bit. So I'm going straight right the angle I want, and then right at the end I roll that file down a little bit so it will give the string a round edge to go off of. I better see how much I did before I mess this up on camera. Plus, hmm? you can automatically do it if you put your finger underneath the file like this. That's going to automatically raise that file up enough to get you about the proper angle. So if I put my finger underneath it as I file, that gives you a pretty good angle. Down slope over there. Pretty good. That's just barely clear, and I'm going to stop on that. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in. I'm going to measure now. And I did make it wider. 273. 245. So this has got to come over quite a bit. Okay, so I'm going to move my A over. I could even just kind of start the file over a little bit. I'm talking about so, such a fine measurement at this point. But I'm holding my file at about that much of an angle. Cutting down this way. Because remember, I'm going to take the top of that nut off. I'm going to take the excess off and, you know, you're not going to see an angle. It's just going to be the bottom of the slot where it's supposed to be. Let's see how it looks. Pretty close. I better leave it alone. Maybe one more. Pretty 
We're good. I'm going to leave it. Ha ha, look at that. <laughs> Between the E and the A, 260. Between the A and the D, 260. Boom. So by scooting it over a little bit, I got the, the exact same distance between the E and the A and the A and the D. Now the D and the G is 265. Honestly, you're not going to tell the difference. But I'm going to get it. So the D is pretty much going to go straight down now. I've got it where I want it. I've got to try to cut that stuff straight down. Which I think I can do because I don't have to do a lot of cutting on these. I got that pencil line pretty close. And I don't have to do a lot of cutting. You want to be sure you get some tension on the strings as you do this. Make sure they pull down correctly. Good, I'm gonna leave that. Did I make it? Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, now the G's gotta come over. 251 versus 268. So 251 versus 268, the G needs to come this way. Here's a uh, 28 for the G. Get the fire head about man, 45 degree angle. She's not looking a little bit more. Yeah, I need to come over a little more. You know what? It's a little bit quicker right at the front. So if I do that, I come up here and get it up here. But that got it. A little bit. Pretty good. One more. You see, if I use the Stu Mac tool that line the lines up here, I'm still going to be using calipers to measure in between the strings um, because it's just the kind of precision I'm after. So I just use the calipers from the get-go, you know, rather than having another tool and then having the calipers to have to come in and check again. Um, I don't know how many people go back in and check as they're going. I think a lot of people just file on the marks and assume they've got it. But I know from experience that you don't always get it. You got to check it. It's pretty good. I better not go any more on that. So I've got 255, 257. That's pretty close. Two thousandths of an inch. You want to see how close? Two thousands of an inch. My gosh, I can't even move the calipers that much. I'm on three right now. There's three thousandths of an inch. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna leave that. And then the B, the G is fifty-seven, which is good, right? Yeah, that's what these are. Fifty-seven, fifty-eight. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to take the B straight down. And the E. And I'm good then. Okay, 20.
You see why it drives me crazy? You think about a pre-cut nut. I mean, how do you know how high your frets are? How do you know how deep the slot and the headstock is? How do you know how far in from the edge they are? It's just nuts. And the nut is critically important to the feel of the guitar. This for me is fresh. It's just Stratocaster sitting back here. This is a 1956 uh, American vintage. Copy of a 56 more or less. And Fender does the nuts where they're equal center to center. That drives me crazy. It feels so cramped to me to have the E and the A that close together. It's just, it feels so cramped, especially when doing chords, especially when doing a B7 chord. That feels so cramped. So after having this guitar around the shop for six months or so, it, just, it drove me crazy. I couldn't stand playing it. So what I did was I filled in the nut slots with uh, glue and dust and recut them where I wanted them. So it's still the original nut, but it's got recut slots. And immediately played good, felt good in my hands. I'm very, very particular about the spacing of that nut and the height of the string off the fret. Um, very particular about that. I, I've got, uh, man, uh, my D21 over there, the shop's D21, came in and had the same thing, equal center to center. Terrible. I couldn't even play it. So I made a new nut for it, equal spacing in between strings, <laughs> plays like a dream. And it has a little bit of a narrow neck on it, so I went ahead and spaced it out as far as I could. And equal spaces, to me, feel so much roomier than equal center to center. And the nuts are very, very, very important part of playability. Okay, the last one's the E. You can see my finger here holding the fret that much off of the fingerboard, and that gives me automatically a decent angle. We're back, camera shut off on me, I think I got it. I did the nut first because it is going to affect the overall action. And I've got new frets and I might as well do the nut right and then I can see what my action is going to be as far as what this guitar is going to need on a necklace yet. A more to go on the C. You see my black marks on my fingers? On the mandolins, I've got a little tool that I use to pull the strings out. Mandolins have a lot of tension. So I got this little dental hook. Here it is. This thing. Actually, I don't know, that's probably an order or cook or something. I don't know. It's a little hook. And I can use this and hook it under the strings and pull them out. Save my fingers. But guitar. This is why I hate <laughs> working on slot heads. Because the slot has, has such a sharp angle, you can't pull the string up. And, man, they are a pain to do. I just finished a 12-string slot head. I don't know. Oh. All right, looks good. I like, the, I like the spacing going on in the neck. That looks real nice. Scoot it over just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit here. It'll be good. Measure. See how I did? Man, it's critical. I get I get a couple of different measurements here. 58, 56, 60, 57, 60. 3,000 seven inch difference. Man, it's no big deal. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Looks good. 
All right, that's it. Now, I'll, uh, I'm not going to do it yet. It'll be one of the last things I do, actually. But now that I've got the slots cut, I would just take the nut off and take it over to my vise right there. Take a piece of sandpaper, strop it back and forth to shape the top the way I want it. Shape the sides in just a little bit so they're not sharp right there. And then I would use um, that same 320 grit wet dry sandpaper. I would get it wet and wet sand it for a little while. And then from the 320, I'll just go straight to the buffer. Uh, I, my buffer is nothing more than a, a drill upside down and a thing with one buffer wheel on it. I have a full mounted switch. I've used that for 20 years and it works great. There's the high speed. I taped the trigger shut. I mean, it's so primitive, it's ridiculous. I've got duct tape going around the trigger to hold the trigger shut, and I use the foot switch to control it. Very primitive. Take up no space over there. I'm in a little shop here, you know. I'm in a Morgan building. It's a, it's this tiny shop. I'm not T.J. Thompson. <laughs> I don't have a nice... I just have my little shop. But I like it. It's comfortable. Anyway, I've got that little bit of drill press sand or um, sorry um, drill sander i'll take that over there buff it off it'll it'll really do the job on it glue it in i'll use super glue on the front edge pop it in there it's good to go now last thing to do on this guitar is i guess i'll go ahead and tune it up and let's see what the action looks like i still gotta stop the braces but I, i'm just curious now <laughs> And the difference between when it came in and now is now the saddle is full height. It had a really super low saddle. There was no saddle. This is the saddle height that I want right here. And so I'm going to leave it strung up with this height saddle and this torque um, for about a week. See what the top does. Because remember, I've got a new bridge plate. I need to let that settle. I'm going to fish scalp in the braces. i got to let that settle. And so it'll sit for about a week before I actually do the neck reset. But this is just going to give me a rough idea. So here's my feeler gauges. And I'm going to go to 115. Oh, that's solid than that. That's at least, oh, that's at least this much. Drop the six out. And there we go. I got a stack of feeler gauges here, and I'm up into the small numbers that I don't normally go into. The easiest way to do is just take your calipers like this and measure the stack. 135. So the action is 135 thousandths of an inch. I want it to be 93. So 135 minus 93 is 42 times 2 is 84. It's got to go down 84 thousandths of an inch at the saddle. It's a 3 to 1 ratio from here down to the heel. So 84 divided by 3 is 28 thousandths. So I've got to take about 30 thousandths of an inch off of the heel. That's pretty standard. Um, you know, most Martins take 35. You know, that's a very standard measurement. So again, I'll, when it comes time, I'll describe this heel so that I have a reference mark, uh, and then we'll take the neck off. And I'm going to go ahead and give it probably a read. Now, I'll, I'll go for 28. I'm not going to go much taller than that on the saddle. This is an HD28. It's got light bracing on it. I don't want a massive tall saddle. Let's see how tall the, let's see how tall the saddle is. Looks like it's about 135 thousandths or so. Hundred and thirty. Okay. Yeah, hundred and thirty thousand. That's pretty good. I mean if I finished the neck shot and I had an action of ninety three thousandths in that saddle, um, I'd be one hundred percent happy. And let's just take a look at the neck relief. 
That's good. Nice and flat. Got a little bit of relief. Okay. So that's it for this guitar today. It's got new frets. It's got a nut. Um, I'm going to go work on another guitar. And later on today or tomorrow or whatever, uh, maybe today we'll get to it, scout the braces. And once I've scout the braces, then it's good to sit for two weeks or a week or whatever until I get around to it. So I'll probably do that this evening because I like the idea of having it sit. You know, get it done enough that it sit. So. Okay, that's enough. Later.